No, seriously, like just slap them, just put them on, just slap them right on your body there. Whoa, yeah, they're on there. So you got enough room for the ski boots or the running shoes. What you're gonna do next? How warm are they? Really warm. <laughs> Is your butt sweating yet? A little bit. We've been waiting for this announcement probably since the beginning of the store back in 2017. We didn't know when we'd be able to reveal this to you. It's always been in our business plan. It's always been something that we've wanted to do, especially being in northern Wisconsin. Hashtag winter running. We're going to do it all for you today. We're going to give you the best overview of how to get through this winter with the cold temperatures and with the ice and snow, being active, walking, running, the whole thing. This is our winter video. This is the Blue Ox Running How to Survive Winter video. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Hey everybody, how are we doing? It is December 10th, it is 2020. And uh, first thing, let's get it out of the way. Happy birthday, Lindsay. Woo! My sister's birthday is today and she's awesome. All right, the main purpose of this video is to help you get out during the winter. So a lot of you maybe haven't been running or walking before this year. COVID has kind of kept us restrained with what kind of activities and group activities and group team sports you can do. So we've seen a lot of people running and walking more and more that maybe haven't otherwise. And we want to teach you and learn from each other with how to get through Wisconsin winters outside. This is the best time of the year for a lot of people to be outside. My wife, Alicia, actually loves being outside in winter way better than the summer because she's dressed right, she's comfortable in her gear, and she just gets that fresh air, which we maybe aren't getting normally with our other activities in other different seasons. All right, so here we go. We want to give you the whole picture from head to toe. Our whole staff is going to walk through what it means to get through winter in our top seven different categories. Number seven, we're gonna go through the top layers with Tyler, okay? Top layers, top layers. We're gonna check in with Tyler real quick. Tyler's gonna tell us a little bit about what he wears on the top part of his body. Top part of his body, is that a weird way to say it? Tyler, what are you gonna wear on a day like today? It's like 20 to 30 degrees out. Tell me what you wear. Do you wear 10 shirts? Do you wear one shirt? What kind of shirts are you wearing? For sure. I mean, one of the things I, I hate the most about winter running is getting overheated. Uh, and so I'm going to take a quick jaunt outside, see uh, how cool it is, and then just kind of gauge at that because I want to start cool. I want to start um, maybe 20 degrees cooler than, than I think I'd be comfortable with. Um, so that way I can warm up into kind of my status quo temperature. So I'll put on a maybe a tight or a looser base layer, minimal base layer, uh, and then a nice light shell is something that I would do tonight. Cool. This is Mizuno Breath Thermal, and uh, why don't you just put it on, dude? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, here, let me just do this. Oh, whoa, so, that was crazy. Yeah, sweet. So this fabric actually, as you sweat, it warms up. There's these little pieces of fabric that are woven into kind of the Poly Pro that warm up as you sweat. So as you get running, you'll heat up. Um, but know this, as you wear this one, because you're heating up with that special fabric, you'll have to regulate what you're wearing in addition. So if you wear a jacket that gets you nice and warm, make sure that you balance out this with it. And this is pretty tight. So this is something that I would wear all by itself on a night like tonight. We've got a really thin little Brooks Ghost base layer here uh, for those semi warmer days or if you just want something underneath your thicker layers. Um, we also have this kind of waffle uh, knit piece here by New Balance that's also a nice uh, starting base layer too. Uh, fuse knit craft piece as well. Some nice reflective layers here uh, but this has a really nice warm feel to it, nice thick feel. We're done with base layers. Tell us about some of the shells that we have here. Oh absolutely. So um, kind of purpose for shells really to either block wind or some of the other elements like rain or really to encompass and hold in all the heat that you're creating with your base layers. This is what I'd wear tonight. It just protects with wind, super thin, super packable if you want to stow it away. This Asics piece here, really nice and warm, has a nice feel and, and fleecy knit on the inside, but also windproof right on the chest too. You go all the way from into some vests, which are really nice to keep your, your central core nice and toasty. Thermal jackets that 
really are a jacket that you can run with for those negative 25 degree days and stuff like that. Also stylish. We also have everything I talked about in ladies colors and styles. <laughs> All right, number six, we're gonna go through the bottom layers with Alicia. Bottom layers, like pants. These are my these are my work pants, but you gotta get running pants. Hi there, today I am going to be talking about pants or the bottom layers. We have a couple different brands in store ranging from Kraft, Brooks, Asics, Mizuno. We have a couple different ones and I just wanna go over really quick what you need to get you through these winter months. So um, first off, all of our winter tights are gonna have some kind of fleece lining. That's what makes them just from your average tight that you wear in different seasons with the winter tight. So the most basic one is going to be by Asics, which I believe is over here. That is your entry level $65 tight. It's not over here. <laughs> and it even has there a pocket. It is. It's a great tight, but it's only fleece lined. You're gonna go up in price when you add that wind paneling um, and just warmer, reflective, all those things. Here's a quick example that this is a super technical, great material that's really warm, fleece lined at $90. This one goes up to 110 because we have the wind paneling um, reflective. They're super breathable, even though they're really warm. These are meant for running, walking, skiing, snowshoeing. You can even see they're going to let you get your boot over them if you were doing something more of that sort. So not just for running, but anything to keep you warm in these winter months. Why don't you try on a pair, babe? No, seriously, like just slap them, just put them on, just slap them right on your body there. Whoa, yeah, they're on there. So you got enough room for the ski boots or the running shoes. What you're gonna do next? How warm are they? Really warm. <laughs> Is your butt sweating yet? A little bit. All right, number five, we're gonna go through head and neck. Head and neck. You gotta have a hat of some kind. You gotta cover those ears. You also have to cover that neck. All right, Emma's gonna tell us about everything above the neck. We've got the hats and the who rags. Oh yeah, so starting out, We've got one of these guys that's, we don't want to forget the neck at all. So it's going to give you full neck coverage, full head coverage, cover the nose and mouth. Just got the eyes exposed. Gives you the full coverage. For a hat, we got a thicker fleece here with the Nathan hat and the ponytail holder here. And then we've got a lighter, thinner beanie on top here with our Christmas pattern from Kraft. Then if you need, that's probably more for, the thicker stuff is more for like that sub-zero, even 20 degrees below. The thinner one's probably more for, I would say 20 to 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then if you want something just around your ears, but not your hat, we got a couple different options. This is the Wazelle headband here. Great for if you got a ponytail or if you just don't want your head covered. And then come into who rags multi-purpose here. Who rigs can be around the neck. They can pull up over your face. You can also take the who rigs and make them a headband or even covering over your full head. Lots of different options for cool. winter hats and neck gear. Yeah. Category number four, even though these aren't really in any particular order, we got to think about our hands and our feet. Emily's going to talk us through gloves, mittens, and socks. All right, Emily's gonna talk about our hands and our feet. Probably feet first if we're by the socks. Do we need wool socks every single day of the week in the winter? Tell me what's up. We do not need wool socks every day of the week. Um, I think there's a bunch of different options. You wanna go for these ones that have blister resist, especially in the winter, be kinda nice. Um, help you out with the like slushy, cold, wet ground. Um, otherwise, it's kind of up to your comfort level, what you want, um, thickness or thinner socks, kinda depends on how warm your feet Yes. Then over here, see gloves and mittens. Um, this one is the one that I use, the craft. Um, it's perfect for like probably like your 20, 30 degree weather because um, it has like a little thing that goes over the top of it. Um, if you want it to be a little warmer, otherwise, it also just has the glove part as well. Then over here, we got these Brooks ones that are meant for like your cold, cold weather running. Um, they're really gonna keep your hands nice and warm. Same thing with these craft ones. 
They're really thick, it's gonna keep your hands really toasty, um, especially for that sub-zero, below-zero weather. It's gonna be really nice for that. Category number three that we gotta think about, Connor's gonna talk to us about visibility because it is dark out in winter. You don't get the same daylight. You have to be visible in the city and on the country road. All right, Connor's gonna tell us about things that will not keep you warm, but will keep you visible when uh, winter running and walking is that much darker outside. Hi, so as Adam said, it gets pretty dark in the winter pretty fast. So visibility is super important. We actually have a ton of lights here, which will help, and reflective gear, which helps keep you visible. Um, some of our popular items are the bandolier vest and the Vive. They both have a lot of reflective gear, which can uh, help you stay visible for those cars. In addition, we have a wide range of these lights with, that you can carry with you from ones that you carry on your head, carry in your hand, put on top of you. Leashes and collars that are reflective, which uh, provide visibility. And for when you're out there on those cool nights, we have these reflective gloves that have already been talked about, but they do a great job of keeping you visible. All right, speaking of sun, if you are working out during the day, you might have to put on some sunglasses. Now, sunglasses are not just for the sun, especially in winter. We have a lot of wind that hits the eyes. Mary is gonna talk to us through everything that you need to do for sunglasses and eye protection. We'll wear sunglasses in the winter. I know. I thought sunglasses are only for oh, Florida oh, in the summer. Runners do. Yes. That too. And also people driving with the, the bright snow and everything going on. Here at Blue Ox, we have a lot of good options for winter running, biking, and just other general activities in the winter. Mostly the light adjusting lenses, the phototech lenses, and then we do also have some great amber lenses as well too that really help with that snow on the ground. Some of the glasses even are interchangeable and come with two additional lens colors. A lot of them have that, that clear and the amber lenses. Are they all super expensive? No. <laughs> No, not all expensive. The ones that we have from Tifosi are anywhere from about $40 to $80, depending on the lens. But we do have a cheaper option. A fan favorite are the gutter glasses over here, too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different options to go with. Not only do they have fun names and look cool, but they're also very practical as well. Again, lots of different lenses, including some amber, some clear ones, and then almost all of gutters are polarized as well too. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna talk us through what we put on our feet after we put the socks on. It could be shoes, it could be yak tracks. There are a handful of different ways that you can prepare yourself for the slick roads, the, the wet roads. In Wisconsin, we get everything right around that freezing range where you're getting ice and slush, but also the deep freeze where you're getting a little bit more packed snow. You wanna be prepared for everything. So to answer the number one question that people come in here with, do I have to have a different shoe during the winter? I always say, maybe? Probably not, okay? I've run through a ton of Wisconsin winters in my road shoes. What's really helpful sometimes is putting on different pairs of yak tracks. If you're gonna stick with one pair of shoes, you do not have to go get a different pair of shoes just for the winter, but yak tracks help, especially in that first day or two after a blizzard, after a storm, after it's put some ice on, on your streets, okay? And there's different, there's different types of them, okay? So this one's a lot more minimal and small that just kind of wraps around your foot. This is the heavy duty uh, running model that puts a little bit more uh, coil in the heel. And then we have the walking model. This is kind of the original yak track that people use. So there's all different types of yak tracks, but yak tracks are helpful if you're gonna stick to just your road shoes for the winter. A side note about winter running and the paths that you can take. There is a winter loop in Eau Claire. We haven't had our snow quite yet, but once we get the snow, there's a four mile winter loop that's plowed off before most of the other paths in Eau Claire. So check that out. We have that on our website for winter running. All right, but if you are gonna do a different shoe in the winter, I suggest more of a trail shoe, okay? So Brooks Cascadia is one example of that. All of our trail shoes would be good, a little bit better with the grip and the ice. This has a nice hybrid tread, which means it's not too thick. It's not too studded out where you could still wear this on the streets, on the concrete, but then you hit that slick ice. It's a little bit better than something like the Brooks Ghost just for traction. So Brooks Cascadia, they also make a Gore-Tex model in this that we carry as well. Um, I would say the most aggressive tread 
from just kind of a normal drop traditional trail shoe is going to be that Saucony Peregrine does really well. They also make a Gore-Tex model of this. Every different kind of cushion that you could have also comes in the trail shoes. So the Hoka Speed Goat is a great model here. High cushion, Vibram outsole, got a lot of traction on that on that outsole here. So these are good options for getting you through winter. Even if you kind of alternate, you got your road shoe and then your trail shoe, your road shoe for some days, your trail shoe for the other sloppy days. Just like in the summer, you might have your road shoe and your trail shoe, okay? That's very common. And last but not least, even for my non-running days and getting around town here, some of our trail shoes actually make a mid boot, okay? These are two examples by Hoka. This is the Speed Goat in a mid boot, but it puts a little bit more of a flex mid boot on there. It's very flexible up top, so where you could actually run in this as well. And then they also make the Stinson. They make the Stinson super high cushion boot version. This is all Gore-Texed out. Is that a word? Gore-Texed out? This is Gore-Texed out. It doesn't bring in the water. It doesn't bring in the wind. It doesn't bring in the slush, okay? These are helpful for even just being outside, shoveling my walkway, sledding with the kids. I don't really have a pair of snow boots anymore. I usually go to a trail shoe that's got a little bit higher mid boot there and it's waterproof. All right, so there's one more way to get around other than the biking and all the other activities that you're able to do in the winter as well. There's one more way and we're super excited to bring you into our big announcement for today. I actually don't think I, I shouldn't do it by myself. I feel like Alicia needs to be in here. Alicia, are you out there? I need you. Do we have customers in the store? I'm just yelling. I think she, Alicia, get in here. Hey, we got to tell them about our big announcement. I can't do it alone. Were you in the bathroom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're just standing right here. That looks pretty decent. We've been waiting for this announcement probably since the beginning of the store back in 2017. We didn't know when we'd be able to reveal this to you. It's always been in our business plan. It's always been something that we've wanted to do, especially being in Northern Wisconsin. Some other running store owners have said, this is a no brainer. You need to bring this to Eau Claire. And it is, I'm gonna let you say it, you go. What are we bringing in the store? No shoes! Oh! We gotta open the boxes though, I don't... That's right, people. We do have snowshoes in the store now. Check them out online if you're browsing the different models. But we want to tell you, just like running shoes, there are different models for different purposes. We have really affordable models that are a little bit more recreational, just like you might be walking or doing some light jogging through the trails. And then we have the no kidding, light racing running models from Dion, handcrafted in Vermont. This guy is incredible. His whole company is incredible personal reference from the runners flat down in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Scott Gall down there, one of the owners used to be uh, sponsored by him. If you're looking at doing a little bit more in the winter, this could be a very good possibility for you. The best of the best snowshoers out there that want the lightest and the best feeling running racing models. A lot of times choose Dion and we're super pumped to have them in here. Made in the USA, made in Vermont brought to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. That's our big video for today. We hope we're able to help you a little bit getting out during the winter. It can be a very pleasant time to recreate and to have fun outside. So stop by the store, send us a message online. We'd love to help you out with whatever you need in all seven of those categories that we walked through. Make sure you have your bases covered somewhat before it gets too cold and too sloppy out there. And of course, if you've never snowshoed in the winter before, check it out. It's gonna be a blast.